this season. Tip off one by Presbyterian. Going with the all black uniforms this evening. Paladins going with all white uniforms. And we're under Ray, kind of a rainy night here in Greenville, but hey, we're inside, gonna be a blast here tonight. And we might be seeing some threes raining tonight as well with Furman, how effective they are from beyond the arc. Younger uses his size and attacks, gets his own miss, puts it back up and in. Blue Hose with an early 2-0 lead. And this is one of the things that's going to be a key for Furman. They've got to be able to crash the boards and do some damage on their defensive rebounding because we know Presbyterian is one of the better def offensive rebounding teams in the country. Presbyterian, 14th in the country in offensive rebounds, ninth in overall rebounds. So definitely a story to watch. Slauson with a turnaround jumper, knocks it down for the Paladins. And that's what makes him so effective is that he can score in multiple fashions, down low, mid-range, even the turn around right there. And he has the ability to step out beyond the arc, a true three-level score. Seeing Hunter on Harrison. We talked about that matchup early. Hunter wins the first round. Harrison with the miss. Put back up and good for Trayvon Reddish. And there's three offensive rebounds yep. already for Presbyterian, leading to four points. Blue Hose with an early 4-2 to two lead. Bothwell in the corner. Ends up with a double team. Tries to get rid of it. Finds Slauson down to 7 on the shot clock. Kicks it back outside to Foster. Nice shot fake. Back to Slauson inside. Kicks it into the corner. And it's knocked down for the Paladins. A fantastic shot there by Conley Garrison. And that was being very patient on offense it was. for Furman. Being able to recognize, let's go inside, outside, find the open man and great recognition to be able to be patient and distribute and find Garrison there and knock down the three. And it's tough with that shot clock running down, right? It's at two on the shot clock and he's kicking it outside. He knew he had just enough time for uh, Garrison to be able to get off that shot. That's the confidence you have when you are in a situation of playing comfortable with your team and you know having now we're getting into the late December and teams are getting much more comfortable with the starting lineups they have or the five that they have out on the court. Bothwell left alone, can't get the ball to go. Let's see who it's out of bounds on. They say it's out of bounds on Bothwell. He didn't like the call. You heard him yell all the way down here on the other end of the court. Presbyterian will have the ball down one. And that was interesting call as well. It definitely looked like Harrison pulled it out of Bothwell's hands and led to the out of bounds, but it is Presbyterian's ball. And you can see how physical the, both of these teams are, extending the defensive pressure. And both teams are going, you're going to see that all night long. They both have that intensity and that grit. Both coaches exude that each game. Rayvon Reddish goes against Slauson. That's a tough matchup for him. Slauson, I think, got a piece of that when Paladins come away with it. And they do what they always do. They like to run, get that offensive pace going. Paladins working it around the perimeter. Furman with the early 5-4 lead. Bothwell gets in trouble, kicks it out to Foster for three. Miss. Both teams fight for the rebound. Blue Hose come up with it. They're on the run now. Harrison with a pull up and an out no good. Back the other way for Furman. So we're about three and a half minutes into this one. Paladins up 5-4. As you mentioned, you can see both teams are wanting to get into some transition offense to have a situation where you're not allowing the defense to get set. So both teams are going to want to push. Paladins seem to be getting shots that they like, just not getting them to fall right now, but still have the one-point lead. Great pass inside and the bucket there for Winston Hill, the senior from Columbia. And Winston Hill, a Francis Marion transfer where he was one of the better players in all of the Peach uh, Belt Conference there, and uh, he's continuing to do a, a lot of good things for Presbyterian this year. Three-pointer in the corner for Foster, knocks it down. So the Paladins have two early three-point shots. One of our keys to the game, Rich, is uh, them being able to get up and make the threes, and they've done it early. Yes, and I would have to say one of the things that you're also seeing is just great penetration by Furman and then being able to kick out to the edges and be effective out there because that's where Furman can be very dangerous. So closing in on the first media timeout, pull-up jumper by the Blue Hose, no good, and an unbelievable rebound there by Trayvon Reddish. 
No, they do not. And they definitely do not want Presbyterian to be able to get into their defensive sets. And so that's why you're going to see Furman continue to push in terms of trying to get their transition offense going so Presbyterian can't get in their defensive sets. So Blue Hose down early. And now they tie it up. A nice drive and buckets for Kershawn Thrash. Substitute into the game here. Paladins have some fresh faces in as well. That's Joe Anderson. Just got into the ball game at the break. Paladins continue to work the ball around the perimeter. Under 10 on the shot clock now. Hunter down in the corner. Slauson with the long three-pointer. Off the rim, no good. Conley Garrison keeps it alive. Back to Slauson. Skip pass, knocked away by the Blue Hose. Somehow saved. Paladins come down with it. Anderson takes it inside. And a big time jam for the Paladins. What a wonderful play there by Tyrese Huey. Getting his first action for the Paladins this season. And, and that's a great way to start it off there with a the thunder dunk. You can't script that any better, in my opinion, right, Mark? No. <laughs> that is one way to get the crowd going and to create th that opportunity in terms of that's how you start your college career. Yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and have a thunderous dunk. So Foster coming back, uh, actually coming out of the game, as well as Slauson. Now Foster staying in the game here, right in front of us. Rebound inside to Anderson. So Paladins up early 10 to 8. About six minutes into this ball game. Othwell picks up his dribble, gets in a little bit of trouble, needs some help. Foster saves him. Move it around to Anderson. Down to seven on the shot clock. Presbyterian really playing well on the defensive end. Taking the shot clock down almost every time. Huey with a turnaround and knocks it down. Four points early for the freshman getting his first action of the season. I think uh, Coach Quentin Farrell is wondering, hey, assistant coaches, who is this that we did not scout for? Anderson, athletic play after the steal. Can't get it to go, then ties the ball up. It'll be a jump ball. And Anderson arrow is, favors the Paladins. And Anderson is one of those type of players. You yes. Know, he might not make every single play, but he never gives up on a play. No. And that's what you got to love, that he saved a possession right there. I'm really impressed with the Blue Hose defense. We talked about how well they rebound and play on the defensive end. They're really forcing these deep shot clocks for the Paladins, something that they haven't really seen all season. And I, I would have to say, talking with uh, Coach Farrell before the game, he made mention that it was going to be imperative that they had to have ex extension of their defensive aggressiveness and really uh, have an opportunity to limit Furman shooting the three-point shots. But you also got, you can't forget, you've got to be able to protect the paint as well. Weren't able to do that there. Pallet is going at it on the defensive end as well. Ball away jumper, in and out, no good. Both teams fight for the rebound. As Thrash comes down with it, then loses the handle. Bob Ritchie standing right in front of us. As soon as they got that rebound, Richmond, he was like, go, 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 go. He wants to push that pace as much as he can. Bothwell draws a foul there in the paints. Yeah, and a lot of times something positive is going to happen when you have guard play uh, led by, like, Mike Bothwell and Alex Hunter because they know how to get the transition offense going, and that's what you got to love, that you're either going to get a foul or you're going to get into a good offensive set when you can extend that offense and get out there aggressively. Bothwell sizing up his defender, trying to push it inside. Picks it out to Foster. Foster over to Hunter. Long three-point shot. No good. Rebound by Foster. Allens will reset and do it again. Anderson for three. That one's in for the Paladins, and suddenly they are up by nine, 17 to eight. Wasn't the best rotation on that shot by Joe Anderson, but rotation doesn't matter. Just ask Reggie Miller, because yeah. it goes in. <laughs> <laughs> it counts as three on the scoreboard. That's all that matters right now. Yes. And as I mentioned, that's just what Joe Anderson does. He provides those little sparks like that. You are correct. When you look at the scoreboard, 17 to eight, 
based on just looking at the game itself, you wouldn't expect that the difference would be nine points at this point. And you can see just how aggressive right now Coach Ritchie coming out of that timeout. Beautiful. Wanted to see a trap like that, and what a great situation to be able to create that turnover. Coming out of a timeout, that's a great job from a defensive perspective for Furman there. And you do it with Slauson and Foster as well, right? Two big bodies that are very aggressive with the long arms. Nightmare scenario there for the Blue Hose. That's got trapped in no man's land there and just didn't have an option and threw that ball into the stands there. Slauson and Bothwell do a little give and take. Backdoor dunk for Jalen Slauson. Paladins remain hot on offense. And that was just showcasing how quick Jalen Slauson is. One dribble to the basket and an easy two points there. Hard, very hard to defend. Slauson had 33 points earlier this season versus College of Charleston. There have been some individual performances for the record books this season for a few of the Paladins. We'll talk about that more as we go on. Foster gets in a little trouble. Bothwell resets. Over to Foster. Foster has it swatted away out of bounds. It'll remain Paladin basketball with nine on the shot clock. Again, we were in a situation where Furman has had multiple times where they've been down late in the shot clock, yes. but they've been able to produce. And so now coming off it, we'll see what they run here out of bounds under the basket to be able to get an opportunity for an easy two points. Or again, the way Furman is, they, they can run a play designed for beyond the arc. Try to work it inside to Slauson. Stolen away by the Blue Hose. They're off to the races. Barnett, athletic play off the glass for a much needed bucket for Presbyterian. Paladins waste no time getting no the time. ball up into the front court. <laughs> no time whatsoever. Coach Ritchie wants them to push, go, and get up the court. Slauson back to Bothwell. Knocks down the three-pointer. That's the fourth of the ball game already for the Paladins. And we had talked with Coach uh, Farrell about one of the keys that he knew that was going to be imperative for this game is that they were going to have to defend the three. And knowing that Furman is a really good team shooting beyond the arc, but even more so here at home, obviously, a lot of teams will uh, shoot better at home, but Furman seems to really exploit that each and every night in Timmins Arena. Great play by Slauson to come up with the basketball. Jump ball, possession arrow will favor Presbyterian. Both teams really getting after it on the defensive end of the floor. Fun to watch. Oh, the both teams are very active, and both coaches, they love seeing this from both teams, that you're staying aggressive regardless of the scoreboard. It doesn't matter. It's all about the play at that particular moment. And you can see Coach Ritchie there continuing to coach uh, with uh, Marcus Foster coming to the bench right there. 14-2 run for the Paladins over the last four and a half minutes or so. Also, I look at the rebounding statistics. Paladin is actually lead in rebounding's right now, or rebounding right now, eight to seven. A little bit unexpected, considering how well PC has rebounded all season. Harrison pull-up jumper cannot get it to go. Hunter comes down with a rebound. Here come the Paladins again. Presbyterian did everything perfect right there in terms of running their offense. Great screen and coming over the the curl cut right there was Harrison just not able to put down that mid-range jumper. Bothwell, another three-pointer, and another three-pointer knocked down. Back-to-back -back threes for Mr. Bothwell. Paladins talked, now up 25 to 10. We've talked about it numerous times, Mark, that the three-point shot is the ultimate equalizer and neutralizer uh, in college basketball, and Furman uses it to their advantage each and every night. Slauson goes way up for the rebound, slaps it as he brings it down. Over to Bothwell again. Let's see if we got a heat check coming from Mike. Over to Slauson, behind the back. Spin move, up and off the glass, and good. Absolutely no way to defend that play right there. What athleticism. The athleticism that he has, obviously, to be able to go behind the back and then spin move, and then the nice, soft touch as well. Beautiful. He got the shooter's bounce right there just because he understood just being able to, nice, uh, to have a nice little floater there and utilize the rim to his advantage. Paladin's up seven or 27 to 10 right now, a 19 to two run over the last five and a half minutes or so. Harrison puts one up, can't come down with it. It's gonna be a foul against the Blue Hose. 
and starting to get away from Presbyterian early. Yeah, it is, and you can see the struggles offensively right now, and we know that Presbyterian is a team that shoots about 41% from the field, but they're struggling, and it's not necessarily just that you know, they're not one of the better shooting teams in the Big South, but you're seeing just aggressive defense from Furman right now that's, I think, causing some of those issues offensively for the Blue Hose. Paladins looking for another bucket. They've been running it through Bothwell the last few times down the floor with a lot of success. You know, why not? Yes. <laughs> He's got the hot hand. You look to him at all times right now in this first half. Hunter now with five on the shot clock. Shot fake, long three-pointer. Alex Hunter leads the country with 51 made three-pointers coming into this game. He adds to that here. And now it's up 29 to 10. And that now is his 16th consecutive game with a three-pointer. And we talked about him at the top of the broadcast. Just he's one of the best in the country. And you can see why just being able to a quick step over and then shoot. Allen is keeping up the defensive pressure. Seven on the shot clock now for the Blue Hose. Knocked out of bounds. Bench loves it for the Paladins. But he's not to 52 yet. And he does not have 16 consecutive games with a three-pointer yet. He's still stuck at 15. But he also leads this team at 54% field goal percentage. So it's almost automatic as well for him, either twos or threes. And a really nice set play out of the break for Presbyterian. Leads to the bucket for Winston Hill. Hunter. Bothwell taking his time with the ball. Works it inside the foul line. Down to six on the shot clock. Anderson drives in. He's going to have to force the jump shot. He does, and it falls down. Everything seems to be falling for the Paladins right now. They extend their lead back to 19, 31 to 12. And again, having an extension of that shot clock in terms of getting deep into the shot clock and still being able to score, that is a situation where defenses get very frustrated with that. A lot of contact underneath. It will be a foul on Tyrese Huey. It's the first foul of the ball game for Furman. And it hasn't been because they have not been aggressive. No, they've been very aggressive. They have been at it uh, all game long from the opening tip. And you can see how that has affected Presbyterian in terms of their shooting right now. And they're really having a struggle from not only beyond the arc, haven't hit any as of yet, but six of 17 from the field right now. And a lot of that has to do with just how aggressive Furman has been on the defensive side of things. Jalen Pugh into the ball game for the Paladins. A senior from Cartersville. Both foul shots made by Trayvon Reddish. Anderson bringing the ball up for Furman. Palins have made their last five shot attempts. Take this one outside. Pew just into the ball game. Why not? I'll knock down a three-pointer as well. Palins extend the lead to 20. Just Six come, of 10 for three so far. Just come right off the bench. Why not? Just heat it up. It goes back to the Detroit Piston days with uh, Vinny Johnson, the microwave. Yeah. He's coming right off the bench and launching. Well, that's what you like to see if you're Bob Ritchie. Seems to be pulling all the right, uh, all the right strings, calling all the right numbers on the substitution so far as Furman has looked really sharp early. Shooting 67% from the field, 60% from three. Can't ask for anything better. And also, as you pointed out several times, their defense has been Eller so far in this first half as well. Hill tries to shoot over Slauson. Can't quite get the roll. Anderson comes away with a rebound. I love it, man. Palin has grabbed that rebound, and they just all, all five of them turn and just start sprinting up the floor every single time. Well, and that's what makes them so dangerous is they have multiple guys that can do that. As you see, Mike Bothwell sneaking in there, 
with another layup as he's continuing to have a really good game so far. But what makes Furman so dangerous is that when you have guys like Slauson who can play the four or five, but he can go up there and get a defensive rebound and then he can lead the break, that puts a lot of pressure on defenses to be able to get back so quickly because you're not having to wait for one of your guards to come get the ball. Slauson can lead that break. Foul on the Paladins. That was going to go against Marcus Foster. Mike Bothwell, four of five from the field. He has two three-pointers on two attempts. He's the first player in double figures for either team. We talk about the offensive explosions this year. Mike Bothwell had 30 points against Louisville. I mentioned that Jalen Slauson earlier had 33 points versus the College of Charleston. And Alex Hunter just had his career high 30 against Mississippi State. I know. It's nice when you can have different players that can just suddenly get hot and you don't have to rely on just one guy. And Alex Hunter is probably telling those guys with a little bit of a joking attitude that, yeah, guys, you scored your 30 in games that went into overtime. I did mine <laughs> in regulation. <laughs> Very nice. Lujos trying to work it inside, and that's going to be a charge. Well done for the Paladins. Dalen Slauson there on the charge. It looked like he was just outside of that restricted area and was able to, to pick up the charge. Herman up 22 here early in this. Seven of their last seven from the field. Yes, and he was just outside of that restricted area there. Nice job hustling over there. And again, that's all about communication as well. And you almost have your defense playing as one unit rather than five guys out there. Everybody's in, in sync and playing together. Sloss has got those bright green shoes on, so it's really easy to see whether or not you're inside that lane or not. Steal by PC. They go all the way to the hoop, and Ray Sean Harrison gets his first bucket of the night. Now, it'll be interesting to see, again, just how fast they're getting back in terms of their offense, I should say. Uh, it, would, it was a situation where they were trying to get that break going, but sometimes when you have a situation where you have a turnover like that in an easy basket, sometimes that can spark a team, and we'll see what happens. Now, two quick baskets by Presbyterian. Can they get on a little bit of a run right now? Kobe Stewart with the dunk. Slauson missed the short jump shot. That was the first Paladins miss in eight attempts from the field. Leads back down to 18. Paladins working that ball movement, but under 10 on the shot clock again. Those are some good basketball teams that they're hanging with. They've played well this season so far. Uh, they definitely have, and uh, that's why, you know, right now they're down, but I would not put them out because when you have somebody like Rayshon Harrison, who's one of the best players in the Big South, and he can get hot at any minute as we see him like scoring right, right there. <laughs> and so now that's that's three straight baskets for Presbyterian, and, you know, they're, they're not going to go away. And for Coach Farrell right here, these last three minutes, it's all about can you get within 10 points before you get into halftime. That was a 6-0 run for PC. Shut down immediately by the Jalen Slauson three-pointer. Paladin 7 of 11 from behind the arc. And that was one of the things that Coach Farrell knew that he was going to have to defend the three really well, knowing how good Furman is from beyond the arc, and especially here at Timmins Arena. Harrison works it inside. A nice bucket there by Owen McCormick. Presbyterian has found something finally on the offensive end here late in the first half. Yeah, at least they have been able to get in a much better offensive flow and get in a little bit of rhythm, and that's what you would expect at some point just because they are a talented team that they would at least find some type of rhythm that's in this game. Slauson turnaround jumper, no good. Blue Hose come down with the rebounds. And again, if you're Presbyterian, you don't have to settle for threes here. You still got plenty of time, obviously. You got the whole second half, but it's just can you chip away, chip away, and you would suspect that Furman's not going to be able to continue shooting at over 60% from the field and from beyond the arc as well. So if you can just continue to stay, stay close, and you potentially will have an opportunity there in the second half. Two minutes exactly remaining here in what's been a fast-moving half number one. Harrison almost. gives up the basketball. That uh, was almost a turnover there. Over to Thrash. Communication. Yep. All the way jumper, no good. Allen is off to the races again. 
Slauson's gonna take it himself. Off the glass and good. The athleticism of Jalen Slauson just pops off the page every time you watch him. Yeah, the ceiling for Jalen Slauson is you're gonna see this guy playing professional basketball. Yes, he leads all scores now with 11. Bothwell also in double digits with 10. Harrison double team. Slauson gives it up to Hunter. He's gonna take it himself. No, goes behind the back to Bothwell. Off the glass, in and out, no good. I think Hunter might have had the layup there, but elected to give it up to Bothwell, who could not complete it. You know he's going to take some smoke for that one in the film room this week. What a pass. What a pass. He had that, and he's saying, Merry Christmas, Mr. Hey, Bothwell. Nice. Here's your present, but you have to finish it. I needed that assist is what he's saying. That's why they were hugging over there laughing with each other. That he was a little frustrated. Hey, if I want to get a pass, if I want to give you a pass like that, come on, Mike. you got to finish <laughs> that, right? <laughs> Don't be the Grinch, come on, <laughs> come on. Bothwell misses the first foul shot. Trying rare. to extend the lead to 20 here. One of the rare misses there for Mike Bothwell, shooting 80% from the free throw line. Very solid. He's solid in so many he different is. categories. I mean, he's already been uh, SoCon Player of the Week uh, earlier this season. He's also the Lou Henson National player of the week as well uh, and second team all Southern Conference uh, last year and he's also a guy who scored over 2,000 points in high school so this guy knows how to play the game of basketball so just a couple of possessions left here in the first half let's see if both teams can make the most of it McCormick with a long three-pointer no good DC still has knocked one not knocked one down from behind the arc Slauson with a spin move, and he's going to call a block on McCormick. He saw the matchup Slauson did coming up into the near court and just made up his mind. Good luck trying to stop me. That's the seventh team foul on the Blue Hose, and that'll send Slauson to the line. Yes, you can see how quickly he had made his mind up, and you can see there that uh, McCormick just was not able to get his feet set and created the foul opportunity there for Slauson to go to the free throw line. So Slauson did something a couple of weeks ago, Richmond, and it really surprised me when I, I was watching the game, when I saw the stat, had a triple-double against Winthrop. That's the first triple-double by any Paladin in school history. So what a way to get into the record books here at Furman. I had to ask myself several times and even go look it up. There's no way that is possible yeah. that a Furman Paladin before Jalen Slauson had not had a triple-double. Of all the great basketball players you've seen come through Furman, Yep. that that would be the first one. That absolutely blew my mind. That also just it does show you that the triple-double is something it's not easy to come by. So when you see no. guys do that on a consistent basis, uh, obviously go back to the Elgin Bell or Dales and Oscar Robinson uh, and, you know, from that perspective. And now today's game with Russell Westbrook and James Harden, what they can be able to do. I mean, it's, a, it's really impressive. You don't see many in the college ranks at all anymore, so all the more impressive. Nice save on the inbounds. And they throw the ball away. It gets to the NCAAs and finds a way to win a game or two. It's the veteran team with multiple scores and, like you said, really good guards. Furman has that makeup this year. It's going to be interesting to see how they do in the Southern Conference. Yes, and I love the situation right here. Off of that. All right, and I think they are going to back off a little bit. We'll see what happens once they inbound the ball and see. I imagine they'll double team. Right, yes, you can see it here. Extending that double team way out to make Rayshon Harrison really work. Harrison couldn't even get a shear in half number two. And we are underway and ready to go. Same five starters, it appears, for both teams on the floor. Slauson hands it to Bothwell, kicks it outside to Alex Hunter. Can't knock down the three-pointer. We talked earlier that Hunter leads all of college basketball with 51 made threes this season. And I hope we have an announcer jinxed him because he does not have one so far on the night tonight. That's really the first good look he got at one so far. Yeah, agreed. And we had talked about that, just Alex Hunter being an impact player of the game. And he, even though he's not having a game like Mike Bothwell or Jalen Slauson, but he is still one of those guys that can get hot so fast uh, because he's just a, an experienced guy, the super senior. And if there's one person that is not worried, though, about his stats, that is Alex Hunter also. Oh, absolutely. 
He's in Slauson at the top, tries to go back door, throws it off of one of the legs of a Blue Hose player. Harrison attacks, Euro step. Slauson comes from nowhere and swats that ball out of bounds. It'll remain PC basketball. Where'd he come from? Slauson got down there in about four different steps, and that was it. That's how fast he can get down the court with his big, long stride and just his athleticism to explode. And he plays above the rim quite often, not only on the offensive side, but even on the defensive side as well. Foster picks up his second personal foul on the inbounds throw. No foul trouble for either team right now. Harrison has two for the Blue Hose. Foster has two for the Paladins. That's really it. Not a lot of fouls called in the first half. A pretty clean half of basketball. Great play there. Harrison gets the ball in the paints. And he gets the bucket. He's going to have to have a big second half if Presbyterian's going to get back in this. Yes, and again, nice recognition to be able to find Harrison there in the paint and get those two easy points. And that's what we talked about. You don't have to settle for threes. You can still just continue to run your offense. There's plenty of time. And just focus on the principles with your offensive set. But Mike Bothwell, he's just going to back people down. Yeah. And you can't defend that because he's so strong. And especially in this type of situation where he's such a heady player as well, that's very hard to defend. He leads all scorers with 13 now. Blue Hose working inside, can't get it to go. Nice put back and the foul. Good play there for Presbyterian. We'll go to the line to try to complete the old fashioned three point play. And that's one of the rare opportunities that you be able to see in this game that Presbyterian is able to get an offensive rebound and have the opportunity for that three-point play. You saw that early on they had three quick offensive rebounds to start this game, but then after that, Furman was able to neutralize Presbyterian on the glass throughout much of that first half. Winston Hill, the senior forward from Columbia, South Carolina, completes the three-point play. He's up to seven on the Knights. Lead down to 17. Paladins work it to Foster. Throws it up top to Hunter. Hunter works off the Slauson screen. Back to Slauson. Fakes the three. Spin move. Goes into the paint and picks up the foul. I think that was on the floor. No, they're giving him two shots there. So he yeah, was shows what I know. The basket. Yeah. So we get a good uh, look now. It's Slauson's got the bright green shoes. Like the, or is it like, are they Grinch shoes? Because that's what <laughs> they, they kind of look yes. like, Grinch shoes. <laughs> and now these on our end of the court, they're nice and glittery as well. So he's going to be a Grinch for PC if he continues to play like this. You see him in the top of the shot right there. The shoe game is on top right now, obviously. And but I, I do like the the aspect look of. Out. Yes, you yeah, can don't see stare that. directly at them. They're that. <laughs> they will blind you. <laughs> And maybe that's what's happening to Presbyterian. Some of the <laughs> players were staring at his shoes and what led them to shooting so poorly there in the first half. But I did like the fact that Slauson did not settle for the three there. He could have easily shot that three-pointer, but saw the opportunity to get to the rim and opportunity to maybe score the two points, but at least got the foul. That's a couple of times here. You see what Presbyterian talked about at halftime, working that ball inside to Harrison, where he's got a little size advantage. Uh, to be able to to post him up. He does, and it looks like did they call a and I'm not sure what they called right there because it looked like I thought that was going to be a foul on Furman I did too. against Harrison, uh, but we'll have to see if we can get clarification on that previous call there. We're blocked from being able to see what happened. They're picking up Hunter at the half court line. Obviously, him being the three point threat that he is, not giving him any opportunity at all to get comfortable. Cuts back door there, goes into the paint, kicks one back outside. Great ball movement over to Bothwell. Can't get that one to go. Comes up with his own rebound, has Slauson underneath for the easy layup, and Slauson now up to 14 on the night. Great play there. Just been able to stay with it at all times, and that's also just effort in terms of. A lot of those loose balls comes down to how much the other players want to be able to get to it, and Furman's doing a really good job of staying very active. 
Presbyterian now 0 for 7 from behind the three-point line. Slauson thinks about pulling up, has his pass deflected. PC out on the break. Ball bouncing all over the place. They cannot convert. It'll be firm in basketball. And both teams there just a little erratic and just couldn't get the handle on the ball for especially Presbyterian there. Winston uh, Hill just wasn't able to corral it there and was trying to get it over to Brandon Younger, just not able to do that. Inbounds pass intercepted. And a bucket and a foul. So Winston Hill starting to establish his presence here in the second half. Looking for his second straight three-point play. I don't know if there was a miscommunication on the inbounds play or what, but Slauson came crashing down from the backcourt to try to avoid the five-second penalty. Had the ball intercepted there by Hill, who immediately took it straight to the rack. Got the basket and the foul, so he's got a chance to get into double digits. You can see Hill, he's very demonstrative right now and uh, saying something to his teammates as well, just in terms of, all right, it's time to refocus. It's time to get in this game. And you can see he's being very vocal right now. Hill leads the team in blocks and in rebounds. Had 26 versus College of Charleston earlier this year. Has two double-doubles this season as well. Can't convert there. Allens get the rebound. Quickly out into the front court and an easy lay-in basket for Tyrese Hughley. He's having himself a night. His first action of the season for the Paladins. He's up to six. And that was just complete miscommunication there as well as Harrison lost track of uh, Huey there and wasn't able to track him down as he gets the easy two. And we're working the ball into the paint again to Harrison and Bob Ritchie right in front of us, super frustrated. That's three times already they've gone to that play here in the second half and been very effective with it. You can see how effective that is, and it's those type of things that, as a coach, you don't want a player like caliber of Rayshon Harrison to have some easy baskets and then start building that confidence and that could lead him to getting really hot. Anderson three-pointer. That they love or not hate Christmas. You can't hate Christmas music. No one but does. I, yes, yeah. but there's some people that are not big Christmas music fans, but I definitely am. But you can't start playing Christmas music until after Thanksgiving. Okay, I was about to ask, were you the guy that starts <laughs> it on like November 1st no. or whatever? Okay, you're not that guy. I'm okay with that. You cannot do that. And Jalen Slauson gets a Christmas present there. Just easy steal for Jalen Slauson and an easy bucket there for Conley Garrison. Nice drive to the basket there and the two points for Furman as they continue to extend this lead. I'm telling you, just their defensive pressure right mm -hmm. now is causing a lot of problems, and it's leading to opportunities on the offensive side because they can get into their transition offense. Well, the Presbyterian was going to get back in this. The first five minutes of this half were key, and they played a little bit better offensively, but they still cannot stop the Paladins. No, they have not been able to do that, and that's a nice offensive rebound there for uh, the, the Blue Hose there, but they just not had enough opportunities to be able to do that. Hunter, sit back outside. Anderson attacks. Hunter double team loses the handle. Here come the Blue Hose. It looks like Slauson got a piece of that one and a very late foul call, and it will go against Jalen Slauson. It looked like that was clean. The ref saw it otherwise. Take ourselves a break. You see uh, the replay there. Referees saw something that we did not. It'll be foul shots for the Blue Hose when we get back. Paladins up 21. Paladins up 21. And uh, Richmond, let's take a look at that last play that happened before we went to break. Yeah, and here you can see as Kershawn Thrash right here, he has a perfect opportunity to go ahead and go up strong with the right hand. Why do you even give Lawson the opportunity to come in and try to make a play? I know Lawson is very athletic and you're worrying about that, but you had the opportunity. He was gonna have to go through your body to try to block that shot. He had an easy opportunity for two points and it's those type of situations where just take the easy basket. Don't yeah. try to make it a little bit harder than it needs to be. Uh, for Thrash there, and we we did 
watch that play again as well. And it was a foul on Dalen Lawson. As we have some fans here that are very excited and yeah. trying to make sure that Thrash has a difficult time at the free throw line. You think a little bit of it was Thrash that he knew Slauson was lurking back there and oh, you've got to be worried about him a little bit, right? Oh, it definitely was, but you still, you've got to be aggressive and Thrash is a big enough player. I mean, 6'3", 215 pounds, he can go up there and yep. get the easy layup with his right hand. Full court press with a trap for PC. Doesn't work against Alex Hunter. Yeah, not many times are you going to be able to trap Alex Hunter. No. He's just too good with his ball handling skills. So experienced as well, I and mean, he's been around for quite a while and has seen so many different situations. Oh, ball gets wedged in there. Tyrese Huey. Boy, that, it got wedged very high in it as well. If that had gone about a quarter of an inch further, I think it would end up rolling in. I don't know how it's very stopped. strange. That was amazing. The physics on that situation were absolutely crazy. So Paladin's going to pick up full court now. Bothwell and Pugh. Pugh just came into the ball game, had a three-pointer in the first half. Foster on McCormick there near the top of the key. Great backdoor cut. And an easy layup there. They got Huey on the back door. Presbyterian cuts that lead back down to 17. Hey, Huey's just so excited to be out there. He, he's <laughs> obviously a little frustrated there, but he was hoping to be able to make a good defensive play and get the coaches excited for not only some of his offensive uh, production tonight, but also on, his, on the defensive side as well. But just a little aggressive there. Both teams, four of their last five from the field. A 6-0 run for the Blue Hose. Huey, turn around jumper off the glass, no good. Gets his own rebound. The Foster, he can't get it to go either. Presbyterian on the break. PC hasn't gotten it under 17 in quite a while. Here's an excellent opportunity here. Yeah, and you can see that uh, Rayshon Harrison over there, he's asking to get the offense going, throw me the pass, but nice look there, McCormick with the finish. Probably the best offensive stretch of the ball game for the Blue Hose. They get the lead back down to 15. That's an 8-0 run for them. Slauson comes to the scorer's table. Bob Ritchie wants to get him back in the game. They need some size back in there and obviously some athleticism with Slauson. He can provide both of those. Anderson, shot clock down to 10. Thought a double team was coming. He comes out of it, kicks it back outside. Good ball moving around to Foster. Three-pointer blocked. Foster turn around. His shot is blocked as well. And Presbyterian forces a shot clock violation. That happens very rarely against this Paladin basketball team. Presbyterian's got the lead down to 15 with the basketball. Yeah, and we haven't seen that, but great uh, shot block opportunity right there by both when you see uh, uh, Trayvon uh, Reddish and also uh, Terrell Ard there just staying active on the defensive end and didn't give up on that play because we've seen multiple times this game that Herman has been able to get deep into the shot clock and be able to score. Now, they weren't able to do that there. It seemed a little bit uh, out of sync uh, uh, on the offense, on the rhythm with their offense there and some of that was created by some confusion based on the defense from Presbyterian. Paladin scoring drought right at three minutes. McCormick, quick three-pointer and knocks it down and suddenly this is a 12-point ball game. And as we talked about, uh, you don't have to get in a situation where you're only concerned about three-pointers now. McCormick there, he can step out beyond that three-point line He's third on the or second on the team, uh, shooting almost 30% from beyond the arc. And just a great opportunity for him to be able to score. But that's why you bring Slauson back in, yep. not only from a defensive perspective, but also just offensively. He's going to be very hard to defend, and McCormick just can't match up with him athletically. Slauson up to 16 points on the game, also has seven rebounds. Three-pointer. Presbyterian can't get it to fall. That was the first three-pointer of the game for the Blue Hose. They are now one of nine. Harrison attacks off the glass and knocks it in. Blue Hose suddenly red hot on offense. Gets that game back down to 12 points. Harrison's up to 10. He's the first Presbyterian player in double digits. 
And one of the goals for Quentin Farrell, when you were looking at that scoreboard, can you get it to within 10 points at the 10 minute mark and have an opportunity to enter at home for break, but a really good turnout tonight. But when they get the students in here, this place gets loud. Southern Conference play later this season. You'll see many of these games. You'll have trouble hearing the announcer sometime. The crowd will be so loud. It's, it's one of the great arenas in the Southern Conference just because of the crowd can be on top of you. But they're doing some renovations as well. So I know there a lot of Paladin fans are excited to see some of the renovations that's going to be happening here. Harrison sizing up Bothwell. Tries to take him inside. Turn around jumper. No good. McCormick fights for the rebound. Hunter comes down with it. Allen has bring the ball into the front court. Up 14. And you're kind of waiting on that dagger Alex Hunter three-pointer here in the next couple of minutes, aren't you, where there's a big moment in the game for him to finally get his shot going. They've been doing a good job on Alex Hunter today, double-teaming him a lot, picking up him up at half court, making him really have to work and give up the ball a lot and have other Paladins step up. But other Paladins have slept, stepped up. Slauson with 16 and Bothwell with 15. Yes, and uh, Coach Farrell had talked about that with Alex Hunter, just knowing how effective he is from beyond the arc, that even on an off night with him shooting over 51%, he could go four for 10 on an off night, and that could be very dangerous. Anderson with a long three-pointer off the front iron. Rebound, Blue Hose. Marquise Barnett takes it himself, can't get it to go. Bothwell gets the rebound. And Paladins continue to lead in rebounding in this ball game, 22 to 18 now. Presbyterian, one of the top 10 teams in the country in rebounding margin before tonight. Hunter, pull up jumper, can't get it to go. Ball's knocked out of bounds by PC. Oh, I guess it went off of Bothwell's hands. It'll be Blue Hose basketball. Yeah, I think that's one of the been things that has been impressive for Furman tonight is their ability to neutralize the rebounding advantage that Presbyterian has typically had on many teams. And so when you're in that type of situation, even though you're still controlling the game with the lead, you're still aggressive on the rebounding side. And that's why Furman is able to stay in this lead. I think every player on the court ran a screen to try to get Harrison the basketball there, and the Paladins still found a way to shut it down. Down to five on the shot clock. Harrison gives it up. Oh, goodness. So 20 seconds on the shot clock. Paladins still with a 14-point lead. As Presbyterians kind of clawed their way back into this the last three or four minutes, and now you see your team leader head out of the ball game. One more obstacle for the Paladins to overcome, and the Blue Hose get another layup. Cut the lead to 12. Paladins quickly come down to the other end of the floor. A heck of a play there by Pugh. Jalen Pugh hung in the air, it felt like, for about three seconds and went back door on the layup to get the lead back to 14. Fantastic recognition knowing that you had a shot blocker coming down with Brandon Younger and being able to utilize the rim to be able to shield off that defender there and nice finish by Jalen Pugh. Well, you talked about Thrash earlier on a break and how he kind of got tentative around the rim. Pugh did the exact opposite, which is what you recommended, and attacked, and it paid off for him. It sure did. And that's why you don't want to be timid. When you have the opportunity, you've got to go. Uh, eat. One of the most effective ways when you know a shot blocker is there is you go attack the shot blocker and rather than waiting for them to have the opportunity to get in a better position. Garrison tries to take it himself underneath, kicks it back out to Anderson. Anderson, layup, no good. Blue Hose basketball. Pull up by Harrison, can't get the three-pointer to fall. Rebound by the Paladins. PC now one of 11 from behind the arc. Slauson hands it off to Anderson. To Bothwell. Slauson. Him to be one-dimensional during a game, you're going to have a better opportunity. But when you have a situation where now he's crashing the boards and having an opportunity for a double-double, but then also scoring 16 points, but he's also been able to distribute as well with four assists. So that's what you can't allow to happen with Jalen Slauson is having him multi-dimensional during a game. 
So an important stretch here for Presbyterian. They've cut the lead down to 12 a couple of times. You really got to get this thing under 10 sooner rather than later if you want to have a chance. Wild circus shot thrown up there. And the referee's going to call it uh, call it off there. I don't know if we got a piece of the shot clock coming by, but it'll be firm in basketball. Yeah, and you can't have it go over the backboard like that from... Anderson brings the ball into the front court. So Lawson gets the ball back, attacks the rim, and will draw another foul. So he'll go back to the foul line. And getting Jalen Slauson in one-on-one -on -one seems to be a nice strategy right now for the Paladins. He's just too hard to defend, and especially is. when you have situations where Presbyterian is switching on some of these ball screens. And when you have that, you're just in a position where you're in a difficult situation to have to guard Jalen Slauson because you're going to be overmatched. Slauson misses the front end. Missed the front end the last time uh, at the line as well. A 71.1% foul shooter coming into this ball game. It's two of six tonight. Make that three of seven. And he's up to 18. Bothwell continues to pick up full court. Berman not making anything easy no, that, on exactly. Presbyterian. They're making them work for everything. And it seems like Mike Bothwell, he's that type of player. He loves picking up full court. You can just oh, see yeah. it in his eyes that he's excited to be able to pick up a player full court. Nice athletic play there. It was really good defense by Conley Garrison there. That was just a, a better offensive play, and that's why uh, Rayshon Harrison is one of the best players in the Big South, and you'll continue to see his name. He was the freshman of the year in the Big South last year. Putting up big numbers again this year, averaging almost 18 points a game coming into this season. Anderson, the wide open three pointer, knocks it down. Anderson into double digits now. Paladins, nine of 17 from behind the arc. You're going to win a lot of ball games when you shoot better than 50% from behind the arc. Uh, yes, you are. And unfortunately for Presbyterian, they're just giving them open looks right now. So there was really an uncontested shot by Joe Anderson. That's happened several times. And that's where you're not seeing that on the other end. It seems like every shot for Presbyterian is really contested. And you know that's got to make the coaching staff and uh, head coach Bob Ritchie very happy to see that. You see attacks the baseline, but a foul called before that. Neither team in the bonus. That'll be the sixth team foul against the Paladins. And that's Bothwell's third personal foul. Put 20 on the shot clock, and PC will make another run at it. McCormick turns, fires the three-pointer, and knocks it down. Let me tell you, Owen McCormick off the bench has been fantastic. He's up to 10 points on the night for the Blue Hose. And his career high earlier this year was 22 points, so he can definitely score. And Presbyterian has two three-pointers. Owen has both of them. Kind of a crazy possession here for the Paladins. They got kind of got out of cycle there, and there was a lot of chaos to it. Ends up in a turnover. Yeah, it looked like they had stepped out of bounds right there, and it de definitely was a situation where just a little erratic there and needed to settle down. But before they could settle down, they'd stepped out of bounds. Foster comes back in for Pugh. Hey, Jalen Pugh's logged some nice minutes tonight for Bob Ritchie's squad. Again, I feel like a big possession here, Richmond, for Presbyterian. Right at this 14-point mark again. Can they find a way to get it under 10? They get it down to 12 very quickly. Now, this is a, a real important stretch for Presbyterian. If they want to have any type of run, they just got to, you still have time right now to continue just run your offense, get some defensive stops here, and put some pressure on Furman on the defensive side. But... We'll see if Presbyterian can get a stop first. It's a great pass from Anderson into Foster. He can't convert. And the Blue Hose can get it under 12 points for the first time this half if they can score here. Harrison attacks, can't get it to go. Paladin rebounds. Rayshon Harrison coming up a little gimpy after that drive to the basket there. Berman into the front court. Take it down close to four minutes on this possession. 
Bothwell on the attack. He's lethal when he gets in close like this, draws the foul, he'll go to the line. Just too hard to defend. He can back people down, and that's a tough position to be in. And he had a mismatch with Jalen Slauson matched up against Rayshon Harrison, uh, but still didn't necessarily have to go that route because he's so effective of backing players down and ultimately getting to the free throw line. This veteran team, the Paladins. Mike Bothwell was the leading scorer on the team last season, preseason All-SoCon, and he's playing like he'll be on the postseason All-SoCon team as well. Over an 80% foul shooter, leads the Paladins. Really like his game. Calmly knocks them both down, lead back to 14. And to your point, it just doesn't seem Presbyterian can get over that hump to get it under 10 points. They're going to need to do that soon as Furman continues with that full court pressure. And it's going to be challenging to do that when you got Rayshon Harrison sitting on the bench trying to get a quick breather to get back in the game. Yeah, we'll have a media timeout coming up at the next dead ball. Nice block shot for Furman. And they're back on the offensive end. Not pushing the tempo quite as much as they have earlier in the game. The clock is their best friend right now. Yeah, Might as well take a little time. Still being aggressive, and we've seen that they, they can be effective running their offense in a, a it, you know, running down the shot clock as well. And just, Look again, at that. just how strong Mike Bothwell is. Just extremely strong. And that, uh, it's those type of plays and players that make coaches look good. <laughs> Play against Samford next week, and then they go at BMI. And man, I can't wait for that UNC Greensboro and that ETSU matchup. There's so many good teams in the Southern Conference this year. It's going to be a battle for those top couple of spots. Yes, it is. And one of those teams that's going to be battling for top of that spot is right here in Timmins Arena, and that's the Furman Paladins. So Furman comes away with the basketball. Three minutes remaining, comfortable 16-point lead. And when Bob Ritchie composed his letter to Santa Claus asking for things for today's game, I think just about everything's been on that list uh, that he asked for, he's gotten. Yes, but I think it's a, also a situation where they have earned some of this because of their defensive aggressiveness and their defense of you know, attitude and their mindset and you know not giving up on plays and being very aggressive and that's what you want to see as a coach is that that effort is there on the defensive side. Joe Anderson, the sophomore guard from Maryville, Tennessee, at the line. How about a 13-point night off the bench? It's just 12. I set that up perfectly. See, yes, that was going to be the 13th point going in, <laughs> and he missed it on me, and it's a 12-point uh, instead. Quick three-pointer from the Blue Hose as they're scrambling late here. Trying to see if they can pull a rabbit out of their hat here. Yeah. But again, Anderson's been a godsend off the bench. He's played really well tonight. He's eating a lot of minutes late in case you just tuned in. Alex Hunter went down with a pretty scary looking fall on his shoulder and perhaps his head a little bit. So he went to the locker room a while back and that's given Anderson some more time tonight. Foster knocks down a three pointer as well. Paladins 10 of 18 from three. Goodness me. And we, we have talked to Coach Bob Ritchie for Furman, and he had talked about, you know, I don't really necessarily want to have better plays. I'm just looking for better players. And when you have players like Foster being able to be able to knock down the threes and the rest of the team, that makes it a lot easier on the coaches. You don't have to design crazy plays and all these exotic plays. You just let these players play and get into their rhythm. And that's what Coach Ritchie has right now with this Furman Paladin team. You talked about for Presbyterian, Rayshon Harrison being your player of the game. He knocks down a quick three-pointer. He's up to 15, just a couple of points below his average. And Slauson shuffled his feet there before he went on the drive. It'll be Blue Hose basketball. And that's a quiet 15 points for Rayshon Harrison. It is. Uh, considering, I mean, he really hasn't shot the ball or shot the ball that well, seven of 18 from the field. And that was only his, in his first three-pointer, one of five from beyond the arc. The Presbyterian has knocked down, I think, four of their last six three-pointers after just an awful start from behind the arc. And there's Anderson again. 
Clicking down to the other end of the floor. Try. It looked like they gave it to Presbyterian initially, so it's one of those That's things right. maybe you couldn't find anything to be able to overturn it. Probably doesn't matter this late in the game unless we see something really special from Harrison and Presbyterian. He misses the shot there. Paladin rebounds. Foster turns it over. Furman been a little sloppy with the basketball here late. And Ujos I think continue to attack. And that happens at times when you have situations where you've got a big lead and everybody's almost in celebration mode. You do get a little bit more slack on not only your offensive side, but also your defensive side. And look at that. I mean, that's one of the things you can see tonight, just what they've been able to do in, in terms of holding Presbyterian down in, in terms of the points. And Presbyterian's a team that we know can score. And they're averaging over 67 points per game, so great job for Furman on the defensive side. And we talked to Bob Ritchie a little bit earlier today. He said this might be the worst defensive team he's had, but the best offensive team. If they could find a way to start dialing up the defense like they are tonight, they're going to be really tough in the Southern Conference this season. Very tough, and I know Bob Ritchie was not happy just with those two points that were just scored <laughs> as we were right here beside Coach Ritchie. So the Paladins are going to get out of here with the victory, probably get some time at home, and get a nice visit from Santa Claus coming off of a win over a Big South opponent. The Paladins will move.